Hello and welcome to Tech Time Live. My name is Jonathan Ott and I'm proud to be the digital marketing specialist for BEA. With me today is Jacob DiBattista, technical service specialist at BEA. Today's topic will be the Eagle family. BEA's Eagle family of motion sensors is designed for the activation of automatic pedestrian doors. The Eagle is universally compatible with all makes and models of swinging, sliding, and revolving automatic doors. Today's topics covered include what's in the box, technology, common applications, field widths and mounting, programming and remote settings, and accessories. Let's take it over to Jake and get things started. Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Time Live. I'm Jacob in the Tech Services Department here at BEA. What we're gonna be going over as you saw in the overview at the beginning of the video is the Eagle, the 10 Eagle. We have some of the accessories here all on the table. We're gonna go over those at the end of the video. Starting out, we're gonna go over the unboxing of the Eagle itself. So starting out, here's the Eagle cover sensor underneath. We have a mounting template. And it's just a screw pack. I'm gonna come up close with this Eagle now so you can kind of get to see what it looks like if you haven't seen it already. This is the Eagle. We have a microwave antenna right here. Completely shift depending on what direction traffic is coming from, up, down, side to side. We have two push buttons here if you wanna program it, but the only thing you can program on the push buttons is the sensitivity, nothing else. For that, you would need the 10 remote, which you could see three different versions on the right side. The one on the right most side being the newest up-to-date one. Comes with a wiring harness in there. Green circuit board, everything here. The bracket on the back. That's the 10 Eagle. Then we have this cover right here. You can see we have that little light pipe here that lets the LED shine through. It just snaps right onto the Eagle like this. That simple. BEA has a lot of different technologies that we work with. We work with a lot of push plates. We work with radar sensors. We work with infrared, laser. The Eagle is a Doppler radar sensor. It works with microwave. So it's sending out waves from this device right here and then reflect it, getting the reflecting back to see if something's approaching or going further away. So it works with motion, not for just if you're standing there stationary, you have to be moving in order to set off the sensor. We talked about the functionality, we unboxed the Eagle. Now let's talk about the application, which can really be anywhere with any sliding door and any swing door really. There are just a few rules you wanna make sure that you follow. If you're putting it on a swing door, the best thing you can do is put it on the non-swing side because this motion, it's a motion sensor, it's detecting anything towards the sensor or if you have it set to a way, but it doesn't know the difference between a person and a door. So if you put this on the swing side of a door, it's gonna keep reopening and reopening. And that is what this accessory is for, which I'm gonna be opening later. So you can see at the end of the video, this is the ceiling adapter. So if you have one of those ceilings with tiles that you can push up and then put you know, like your wiring and everything up there, if you cut a hole in your ceiling, you can put this adapter up there so the Eagle is recess mount up on the ceiling past the swing of the door looking down so that it still can open up the door for you from that side if that's the application that you need it for. Now on a sliding door, it really doesn't matter what side of the door it goes on. You just wanna make sure that there's no vibration on the Eagle. So that's where the spacer comes in. That is one of the accessories that I don't have to show today but it's basically the same outline of the Eagle, just spaced out an inch or two. But really you can use the Eagle anywhere that you need to open a door. As long as you have the room there and you follow the NC standards, it will be okay. So here's the Eagle I have mounted on this wall. This is not an ideal application to put it on as this is just for demonstration purposes. Now, two of the things we need to go over is the field size and the antennas. If you look at the antenna on the front, so that little radar head, that those three squares on the gray background, that's the antenna. That's what where the field is projecting like a cone. So if you imagine in terms of a flashlight, when you have the light close to the ground, it's a little narrow circle. And as you start to lift up your flashlight, the circle gets bigger. 
That's the same idea with a motion sensor. If you look behind, there's the other antenna that comes with the Eagle. The difference between the two is one is a narrow style and one is a wider style. So if you look at the overlay on the screen right now, this is straight from the user's guide. One of them shows a more narrow but longer pattern out from the sensor. And one of them shows a wider pattern, but more close to the sensor. The wider pattern is good for applications like a sliding door entrance into a um, grocery store or any place like that, where you want to be coming from the sides. That's good for the wider antenna. The narrow antenna is if you're maybe in a corridor or a hallway, or there's a place with two doors side by side where you don't want it to catch the swing of the door beside it, like in a dual egress application, that would be where the narrow antenna would be okay. Because like we showed before, you can twist that radar head left to right, up and down, depending on the traffic. Now, one more thing I want to point out is we're going to go over the pro how to program a sensor like this. One more time, those push buttons on the sensor do not program the Eagle like the other sensors do with their buttons. All it does is sensitivity. You need to get the 10 remote, like I showed before at the beginning, if you want to program the Eagle with the immunity, the hold time, the direction, all of those settings. If you look at section four of the user's guide, this is on page two of four. This is where it also shows the wide versus the narrow antenna. So to give you an example, a better example of how that width and length differ, let's use the example of seven feet high mounting height. The narrow antenna would give you a six and a half foot by eight foot field, while the wide antenna would give you the 13 foot by six and a half field. So if you look at the pictures on the right, that wider antenna is the one with the three squares, the golden squares on it. And you can see how that 13 foot field it was talking about was that width. Whereas with the narrow antenna, it only goes down to six and a half feet width at that seven foot. Now, like I said with the flashlight example, that will get bigger or smaller depending on the height, as well as how you program it with the field size adjustment on the remote. When you look at the Eagle, at standard, this red LED will not be on. If you're not moving, the LED goes off. But if I move towards it, the LED is gonna come on. And that little light tubing inside makes it easier to see. Now, this is the 10 remote that I was referring to before. We're gonna go over everything you can program on the Eagle from top to bottom on the user's guide with, with the remote. Now, if you look at the user's guide, the first thing you're gonna see is zone size. On the new style remote, that is this button right here. It's a little volume button, a ramp, a wedge. I've heard it called a lot of things. First of all, you wanna start with unlock. You're gonna get a red flashing LED very slow. Hit the ramp, it's gonna blink faster. To check which setting you have, question mark, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this sensor, the zone size is set to nine. If we wanna change it, just hit the ramp, four lock, lock, or any other number you want. So now what I did was I made it so you have to go a little bit closer to the sensor to get in detection, which can't really be shown right here with, since like I said, this is just for dem demonstration purposes only. But if you had an eagle up on top of the door, the lower the number on the zone size, so if you set it to one, it's gonna be a lower field. Like it's gonna be a less of a field than it would be at a nine where that circle is gonna get bigger. So the higher you go, the circle gets bigger. The lower you go, it gets smaller. Now, if you want instructions on how to use this remote, you can get more in detail depth explanations on one of our recent Tech Time Lives of the remote where I had all three of our previous remotes side by side showing how to program it. So that being said, next on the list will be immunity filter. Now, this is if you're in the environment, you have like trash blowing in front of the sensor. So for example, if you had something bigger, but like a leaf, that might set it off at a low immunity filter. If you set that immunity higher, unlock, the immunity filter is this little shaky box icon is what we like to call it. Faster, set it to seven lock, lock, or any number that might be higher. 
you're going to see that you get less false disturbances from the environment. So anything that might be passing by, like smaller trash blowing in the wind, if there's like an abundance of leaves, maybe you might set it off. But the higher you go, the less disturbance you get on the eagle with the immunity filter. Now let's talk about detection mode. At default, it's set to uni. So if I weigh my hand, so you saw it took a little bit more to get in that detection field with it at four. If I wave my hand towards it, it's gonna set off. If I, let's do, let's set it to bi-directional. Unlock, double-sided arrow right here at the bottom. Let's set it to one, lock, lock. If I go towards the sensor, it's gonna set off. If I go away from the sensor, so using my body, away from it, so you saw right there, it detects. If I set it to unidirectional, unlock, double-sided arrow, two, lock, lock, it'll only detect me going towards, but as I walk away, no detection. Now, what if I set it to uni motion tracking feature, which is MTF, which is what we set it at default on number three, unlock, double-sided arrow, three, lock, lock. If I walk towards that sensor now, it's gonna see me, but for as long as I'm standing in this field, like we can see here, it sets the bi-directional until I leave. And that's for an example of if you're, let's say you're coming out of a, a grocery store and you're supposed to only be exiting out the door. Well, there's a sensor on each side. If I walk, if I go to walk through that door and let's say I drop my keys and I have to go back and pick them up, it switches the bi-directional for that little bit of time to keep that door open so it doesn't close on you. And that's where the MTF feature comes in handy. Now there's one more, rather there's two more, but for explanation purposes, we'll go over the uni away. That also has an MTF feature, which you now know what it is. So motion tracking feature with the uni away, unlock, bi-directional arrow. Number four is the regular just away. We'll set it to five that has that motion tracking feature. So five, lock, lock. So as I walk to the sensor, you saw nothing happen. As I walk away, now it sees me. However, if I walk away, so just like this, now as long as I'm moving back and forth towards the sensor, it sees me every time because of the MTF feature. Let's set it back to uni. Unlock, bi-directional arrow, two, lock, lock. Now there's an output configuration setting that's right here. Looks like a little switch, three dots in a triangle formation with a line through the middle. Normally open versus normally closed. That's all it is. We have hold open time, which is the clock. Unlock the clock. Number nine, lock, lock. And it's as it sounds like if I move in the field, the moment that I leave the field, it's gonna count down nine seconds and it's gonna drop detection to the door operator. So nine seconds later, that LED just came off. Where if I set unlock, clock, one, lock, lock. Now move towards it, move away, one second hold time, that's off. And then there's the mounting height, there's door control F2. We don't have to worry about those. The most common things that you're gonna be using are what we did. The last thing that you can program on the Eagle is just doing a factory reset. And in order to do that, it's unlock the magic wand symbol. It's at the very top. Nine, lock, lock. And now everything has been restored to as if it came right out of the box. There's another feature on the sensor that you can do and it's called an access code. So if you wanna set an access code, let's say you have two eagles on the store side by side. If you program them, they're both gonna be starting to blink. What you can do is hit unlock, hit lock once, set your access code. So one, two, three, four. 
LED went off. So when I unlock the sensor again, notice how it's a faster blink. If I try to hit the volume, the little ramp button, LED goes off. If you know the access code, unlock one, two, three, four. Now it goes the slow again. I hit that little volume looking button and I can program one, lock, lock. If you don't know the access code, just cycle the power. We're gonna do unlock and then one, two, three, four, since we know the access code, one, two, three, four, hit lock one time and then four zeros, one, two, three, four. Access code is gone. And that's programming the Eagle. If there's anything troubling you that you're having trouble on with the programming spot or with the programming section of this user's guide, definitely let us know. You can call the tech support line and we will help you out with anything you need. We've gone over the main parts of the Eagle. Now let's go over the accessories. Now, obviously I don't have everything here. I probably got half of what we actually have available for the Eagle, but I'll show you some of the more common things that we use. For example, this right here, this is the 10 ERA. This is an Eagle bracket that makes it so that, so you put the Eagle right here, you mount it onto this little plate here and the rain doesn't waterfall in front of the sensor. It kind of goes off to the sides. So it's a little bit curved at the top for that reason. So that it doesn't waterfall in front of the sensor and it doesn't get inside. Now, here is the 10 ERC. We're gonna open this up and I'll show you what that looks like. The ERC is the Eagle Rain Cover Deluxe with the same purpose in mind, but it's more effective. So here's the 10 ERC. You can see how it's much, much bigger than the 10 ERA. And it's more protective too. So here's where the LED would shine through right there. What you would do, you put your eagle inside. And obviously you'd have the cover on. But this is basically how it would look. It covers the whole entire front. If you look closely at the back, you can see an outline of the eagle. So it shows you where you would screw it in very nicely. It's the same size as the back bracket of the eagle itself. And that's the 10 ERC. Now in the application that I told you about before, where you have to mount it onto the ceiling, or this might not look so good compared to the ceiling accessory, but if you have to mount it out past the swing of the door, there are brackets available. Now, this isn't really a common thing to use to get out past the swing, but it is available. It's our industrial bracket. This is the more chosen one, is the 10 Eagle accessory, the ceiling adapter. So if we open it up, here's kind of what to expect. We have some mounting templates and a user's guide. But the Eagle is gonna be hidden behind this. So basically, here's your ceiling it's gonna be recessed mount up on the top. The only thing that's gonna be showing is the LED through this little slit here. So the Eagle will go in that bracket in the back, snap in place, you'll mount it inside of there, just right up above at the swing of the door, you can mount the Eagle up there. Some of the other things that we have available are the 10 Eagle spacer. And then we have a video version where you can put the camera underneath. So it's 
basically the shape of the eagle, like I mentioned before, extending it out a bit with the little camera lens on the bottom. The other thing we have is the pen EMB, which is kind of the same concept as this, but this isn't see-through. It's more of a black colored bracket that you can mount it onto a door where there's not really any room above it. You can mount the sensor just like that. The other accessory we have available is just like the industrial bracket, but it goes out a foot. The industrial bracket goes out two to three feet. We have a mini bracket that goes out one foot. So it's a lot smaller. And that depends on the application. If you have to extend it out past something, um, that would be maybe just a foot. You can use the mini bracket so it doesn't go out as far. If you need to extend it out past maybe just something smaller, maybe there's some vibration on the door too and you wanna make it more stable, Use the spacer. Thanks for watching this Tech Time Live. Hope you got the most out of it. Um, everything that you learned in this video here is stuff that you're going to be using out in the field. So if you ever need to check back into it, this is on the BEA YouTube channel. Um, make sure, just a quick tip, you always get a remote with your Eagle. If you ever need to call us before you go to an application for before installation or if there's any advice you need, make sure to call the tech line and we will be available to assist. So until then, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you everyone for watching this Tech Time Live. Today we went over the Eagle family. We covered what's in the box, technology, field widths, mounting, programming, remote settings, and accessories. For more Tech Time Live videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash BEA sensors. Also be sure to visit our website at www.beasensors.com. Thank you for watching and have a great day.